All right, uh, greetings, greetings, fellow grade tens. It's Mr. Shadrail here. Welcome to Back to Basics. Now, what is it that we are going to be examining basically today is we are looking at our trig function, right? So we are going to be looking at our trigonometry. And now this is going to be our 20, uh, this is going to be our 2017 paper that we are examining November 2017, right? Now, let's see in terms of what is it that it, uh, we can do in them. They say now the first one, 6.1, they want us to determine the general solution of this, right? So how do we find uh, our general solution firstly? Now, remember here that you are having, uh, this is uh, given by what? This is given by sine of open bracket x subtract 30, right? This is subtract 30 degrees is equals to cos of 2x. Oh, it's good. So basically, that is what you are given. And now... What is it that you are going to do firstly to try and find out in terms of, uh, you know, to do our general solution? The first thing is that to, to take note of is that now remember here you are given this in terms of sine and also your cost, right? So it is almost impossible for us to work with, uh, you know, sine and cost. So what we are basically going to do is we can change, uh, you know, any of these to either become your sign or to either become your cause, right? Now, for example, this is going to be what if, let's say, you can say this, uh, your sign of open bracket x subtract your 30 degrees uh, is equals to, and then what is going to be this one? Now, the other one, you're going to be given by cos, and then uh, this is, remember, cos of 90 degrees, or rather, not necessarily cos, but sine. Remember, a uh, cos can still be written in terms of sine, right? So cos, remember, it can still be written in terms of sine of 90, right? So this is going to be sine of, are uh, you what? Your 90 degrees subtract your 2x. How to get? This is one and the same thing. Remember that cos and sine are our co-functions. How to get? So now, which means you can represent your cos in terms of uh, in terms of sine, right? So this is how we are going to do it. And now from here, what is it that you're going to do? Now that you're having this, now we are going to lose the sine in both sides, right? You can divide by sine on both sides. Now these signs, we are going to lose them, which means now what is it that you're left with? You're left with X subtract your 30 degrees is equals to 90 degrees, right? Subtract your 2X. How would you get? So basically that is going to be uh, that uh, thing, right? And now, what is going to be now part of this particular solution? Uh, now, so we are going to say now, this is going to be one of our solutions. So when we are looking for our solution, we are going to now group all of these, right? Now, when you are grouping all of these, we are going to say, look, uh, this is same as what? Now, this is going to be same as, uh, firstly, this is same as your x, right? Now, if you take your x, this side, this is going to be same as your 3x, uh, is equals to when you take your 30, this side is going to be same as your what? 120 degrees uh, plus your what? This is going to be plus your 360 uh, K, where K is the element of what? Of your, you know, of real numbers. Remember that this is going to be your general solution. So you need to represent that, right? So which means now, uh, as you are dividing, now you are going to divide here. And when you are dividing everything by three, you are going to divide here by three. You are going to divide everywhere by three also, which means your X is going to be given by what? Your X is going to be given by 40 degrees. And then now this is going to be plus, what is 360 divided by uh, 30? This is going to be same as plus 120K. How to care? So basically that is going to be uh, that first solution. Now what is going to be our... Uh, our other solution that you are going to have here. Remember that uh, also your sign is positive in your second quadrant. Remember when you are doing this, uh, uh, remember it's all, then it's sign, uh, it's your tan, and also, right, and also your cos. Okay. So which means now sign here is also positive, right? So which means 180 star threat is going to be also part of our new solution, right? So, which means this is going to be same as what? This is same as X subtract 30 degrees is equals to what? Is equals to 180 degrees. 180 degrees subtract this, which we got, which was 90 degrees, subtract your 2X. Isn't it so? Then this is going to be same as plus your 360K, where K is your element of real numbers, right? And now what is going to be this uh, solution? 
Now, remember here, this is going to be same as x subtract your what? Subtract your 30 degrees is going to be equal to what is going to be this one? Uh, 180 subtract that. This is going to give you what? Uh, this is going to give you uh, your same as. Now, this is same as 180 plus, right? This is going to 180 minus rather. So, this is going to be same as your negative. Uh, when you say 180 subtract that, this is going to be your 90 degrees, right? So, this is going to be your 90 degrees plus 2x. Isn't it so? This is going to be plus 2x. Then, this is going to be uh, plus your 360k. Uh, I want to get and now that you are from here then you can group the like terms when you take the negative two this side is going to be what a negative uh negative two plus that which is going to be your negative x is going to be given by what 120 degrees this is going to 120 degrees plus your 360k I want to get so basically that is going to be that which means the solution here your x is going to be cause you what is going to be same as your 100 negative 120 uh degrees and then this is going to be plus your 360k, where k is your element of real numbers. Are we to care? So basically, these are going to be the two coordinates or the two uh, solutions that you are going to have in there, right? Now, let's move swiftly along and see in terms of what is it that you are given, okay? Now, let's say uh, now we are looking at your 6.2.1. Now, here they want you to write down the, what, the period of uh, g now what is the graph of g the graph of g is given by this which is uh, g of x is equals to cos of 2x right now what is period basically your period uh it is what it is the time that you graph uh complete uh one full cycle right and remember that your period uh for cos is given by what a uh, period uh this is 6.2.1 then your period is going to be given by what we have the formula which is period is same as your what uh 360 uh, degrees divide by what now here it's going to be divided by two because the value that is next to uh the x is what it's going to be your two how to get which means the period that you are going to have here is going to be same as 180 degrees how to get which means the graph is going to take 180 degrees to complete one full cycle right so now let's look at your two point uh point two right your six point two point two now they state the they say state the range of f now what is the key factor for stating a uh, range? Now, remember, uh, your range is guided by what? Your range is guided by the amplitude, right? Your range, your range is going to be guided by the amplitude. And remember, if you can look at this particular graph, this is f of x, which is equal to your sine of, uh, this is same as x, subtract 30 degrees, right? And now your amplitude here, it's same as one, right? So which means this particular graph is going to have your maximum and your minimum point of one. How would you get the, the positive one and negative one? So therefore, which means now from here, what is it that you're going to have? Uh, for your amplitude, uh, right? Uh, or rather for your range, this is going to be uh, y, which is your element of your numbers. Your y is going to be ranging between negative one and also what? And one, because your your amplitude here it's same as your one i would get so which means it's going to have the maximum point of one and the minimum point of negative one right hopefully that uh this is going to make sense to you now let's see in terms of what is our 6.2.2 have for us right now this one require us to make up our space in here so let's do so so now we are going to make up our space here yes 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 now they want us to say now on the grid provided. They want us to draw the graph of F and also your G. Now, how are you going to do that, right? So obviously we are going to draw ours in here, right? So we are obviously going to start by making up our Cartesian plane. This is going to be our Cartesian plane. The other, you know, the other part of your Cartesian plane, right? Now, so what else are we are we given in here? So they are we are given that your ra your graph ranges from negative ninety up until one hundred and eighty, right? So which means let's say this is going to be, let's just make this to be negative ninety so that we can have uh enough sample space, right? Or rather enough space here. So this is going to be ninety. This is going to be positive ninety degrees, and this is going to be positive one hundred and what one hundred and eighty degrees right 180 degrees because that's what we are given right now 
And, and then now what else are we then going to have? Now, if let's say, firstly, we start with a graph of F, right? Now your graph of F of X is given by what? It is given by sign uh, of what? This is sign of uh, your X that threads your 30 degrees. And remember, this is going to be your shift uh, to your left, right? Or right, this is going to be a shift to your right. Remember this, the ordinary graph of sine is shifted 30 degrees to the right, right? Now, let me remind you of this before we do anything. Remember that we are saying the graph of sine starts here at zero and it moves something like this, right? And it starts at zero. It consists of your turning point at 90 degrees and it consists of this particular point that you intercept at your what? At your 180 degrees and it consists of your turning point again at 270 degrees, and these are uh, intercept at your 360 degrees, right? But now, what is it that I want you to take note of? All these points, according to this graph, all these points are shifted 30 degrees to the right, right? Which means now, uh, if you are having your turning point at 90 degrees, now it is going to be same as 90 degrees plus what? 90 degrees plus 30, which is going to be at 120 degrees, right? Similarly here, the turning point, it was supposed to be at 180. This is going to be 180 degrees uh, plus what? Plus your 20 plus your 30 rather which is going to be at what now it's going to be at 210 degrees right similarly here it's now not going to start at zero but it's going to start where it is going to start at your 30 degrees are we together because that graph is shifted in them right so i want us to take note of those two uh, of those few coordinates before we start plotting right now so let's try and make up our scale now to use the scale of fate so this is going to be your 30 degrees and this is going to be your 60 degrees. This is going to be same as your what? Uh, this is going to be same as your 120 degrees. And this is going to be same as your 150 degrees, right? And similarly here, this is going to be your uh, 30 degrees, negative 30. Rather, this is going to be your negative 60 degrees. They said your graph needs to end here, right? So now let's start by drawing the graph of, of f of x, right? Now we are saying from here, uh, the graph of f of x, firstly, the turning point, it's going to have the what? It's no longer going to start there, which means it's going to uh, pass here at what? At zero is to uh, at, no, your, at your, your one rather, right? It's going to pass here at your zero and 30 degrees. Look at me uh, making mistakes there. So th that is going to be that first graph. And now let's say this is going to be our positive one and this is going to be our negative one. What else do we know about this particular graph of ours is that now, uh, remember it was having its turning point here. So which means if it was moving to the negative direction, it was going to have the uh, your its turning point at negative 90 degrees. But now that this is shifted, so it's, this is going to be same as negative 90 degrees plus 30 degrees, which means now it's going to have its turning point at 60 degrees, right? So which means the turning point is going to be here at 60 degrees. What else can we take note of? The, the turning point, uh, also this side is going to be at 120 degrees. And now, what else are you going to have? Now, at 180 is going to be somewhere here because it is supposed to turn there at, or it's supposed to intersect there at 210 degrees, right? So which means it's going to have uh, the coordinate somewhere here in between, right? So now when you are plotting this particular graph, uh, of f which means this is going to be what remember this is the turning point so this is going to start here and uh, it is going to move swiftly along swiftly along swiftly along and then this is going to be here right uh hopefully this makes and this is going to you know pass uh here right hopefully now you at least get that right and uh, now so the graph is going to look so uh somewhere like this if you are not sure about plotting this using your what um uh, using uh, the concept, you can just literally just plug this in your calculator and you're going to have the accurate points, right? You're going to have the accurate points that you are going to find in there, right? Now, what else? Now, which other graph are we going to draw now? The graph of what? The graph of your course. Now, there's nothing much about this graph, of course, except that uh, it is what? It is having the period of what now? Uh, it is going to have a complete cycle at 180 degrees, which means, remember the graph, of course, if this is the Cartesian plane, it starts here, right? And all of this, it does it, the original graph of X, it does it at what? At 360 degrees. But now this graph is going to be shrinked such that 
whatever that was done at 360 degrees is only going to be done now at what at 180 degrees right so basically that is going to be there which means what is it that you're going to have here uh now you're going to say look uh now your intercept here first let's start this particular graph start here at one right it's going to start here at one and uh, it's going to have its Right. Now, if you are using uh, your calculator for this one, which I would highly recommend, uh, firstly, the turning point is going to have an intercept here. Uh, it's going to have an intercept here at uh, between your 30 and also your 60. Right. It's going to have the intercept. And then now at 90 degrees, remember, it's going to now have the turning point. Right. It's going to have the turning point at 90 degrees. And now when you're moving swiftly along between 120 and 150, it's going to have an intercept and it's going to end there at 180. It's going to be in here, right? So I would advise that you use your calculator to plot this particular graph. And similarly on this side, it's going to uh, intersect between here. This is going to be its intersection. And now it's going to have its turning point somewhere here at 90 degrees, right? That is going to have its 90 uh, it's turning point so which means now this graph is going to start here let's start with the side it's going to be somewhere like this uh this is going to be the turning point uh then this is going to move let's uh let me just rewrite that one very nicely so we are saying this graph is going to start here have a turning point here move something like this move here right come back here 10 uh and also have the turning point in here right Hopefully, you know, you are going to uh, see this particular graph when you are drawing it uh, using uh, your calculator out together. So, but this particular graph is going to look almost something like this. Now, uh, let's, uh, so this is going to be as far as these two graphs are concerned. Now, if you can look at your 6.2.4, they say write down the X coordinates of the point of intersection for F and also what? And your G. So now we are saying where are, both of these uh, graphs going to intersect, right? Now, where are these graphs intersecting? Firstly, uh, now, if you can check here, uh, it was intersecting here. Uh, it is intersecting here. Can you see that it is intersecting here? Where else this graph is intersecting? It is intersecting somewhere here, right? Uh, it is intersecting somewhere here. And the last graph uh, is going to intersect somewhere in here, right? It, as you can see here it intersects somewhere in here, right? So intersection is the point of contact. And when you are going to use your calculator for this one, look, since I've used my calculator, let me see. Now, uh, you can check if you've plugged both the graph of F and your G in your calculator and check where both of these graphs are having the same points. You'll realize that uh, in your calculator at X, firstly, when your X is equal to, uh, when your X is equal to your 80 degrees, uh, you'll see that both of these graphs, uh, both of those particular graphs are having are sharing the same point, right? Now, if you're moving swiftly along, now the other point, if you are checking from your graph, uh, your calculator there, uh, you are going to realize that the other intersection is going to be at 40 degrees because that's where both of these graphs are also equal. And similarly, if you are moving swiftly along, now uh, the last point in here is going to be where X is equal to 160 degrees. So basically that is going to be where also this particular graph is intersecting. So indeed you are going to have these three points where uh, both of these graphs are going to intersect. Hopefully this uh, makes sense to you now and you are in a position to answer all these trig function related, right? So thank you very much for staying uh, in up until this end. Thank you.